Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to cover joint disorder with a special emphasis on osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. While we will have a brief overview of the uh, variants of the rheumatoid arthritis and gout. Following are the references. This video is made for fourth year MBBS student uh, and the learning objectives are to describe different type of arthritis. Uh, discuss the DD of the arthritis, explain the morphology and histopathology, describe the causative factors and pathogenesis of arthritis, discuss juvenile idiopathic arthritis, uterus syndrome and psoriatic arthritis. By the end of this lecture, we will try to find out answers to these clinical problems. First one is the uh, 67 years old women present to your clinic complain, complaining of a stiffness and pain in both of her knee. Upon further questioning, she tells you that pain become worse later in the day after she has been walking around. Then there is another case of a 44-year-old uh, woman presents to your office complaining of chronically swollen finger joint over the past six months. She tells you that swelling and pain are usually most severe in the morning, but do resolve within a couple of hours. Then there is another clinical scenario uh, in which a 22 years old man present to your office complaining of lower back pain and stiffness. Upon further questioning, you discover that occasionally has uh, sharp pain and burning in his eyes. He denies any recent GI symptom or illness and he is not sexually active. Uh, then there is the last case of 45 years old obese man present to the emergency department with a swollen tender big toe on his right foot. He denies any trauma to the toe. Further questioning reveals that he has consumed a large amount of alcohol the night before. Cyanival capsule is thick, fibrous and smooth, but when it is thrown into many many fold at the site of its insertion, it is lined by cells without any basement membrane and this uh, lack of basement membrane allow easy permeability of the nutrient. Uh, under, the, uh, under these cyanocytes, the tissue is low cellular and you can see there are two types of the cells in uh, in these uh, synovial lining which is one to four cell deep layer the one is type A and another is type B type A are specialized macrophages with lysosomal enzyme and dense bodies while type B are fibroblast like cells and they synthesize hyaluronic acid the synovial fluid provide uh, uh, lubrication nutrition and they also ingest with debris and they secrete hyaluronic acid, immunoglobulin and lysosomal enzymes in that uh, environment. The synovial fluid is the fluid which is present within the synovial cavity or joint cavity and it is clear, sticky and viscous fluid which is present in very little amount within the cavity. It is 1 to 4 milliliter in quantity. It is the ultrafiltrate that act, act as a molecular sieve. There is no thromboplastin, tissue thromboplastin, so it cannot clot. Uh, it, it, it contains hyaluronic acid, which is a very large molecule, and because it is highly charged, it has, it has got a high affinity with the water. The articular hyaline cartilage is glistening, smooth, white, and semi-rigid. It is not thicker than more than uh, 6 mm only, and it basically serves as an elastic shock absorber and uh, wear resistant surface. It is composed of 10% uh, of collagen type 10 while 70% of it contains water. 8% uh, of the articular cartilage contains proteoglycans and the chondrocytes are the also there. The collagen type 2 resists tensile stresses and uh, transmit vertical load while the proteoglycans are responsible for the turgor and elasticity limiting flexion. Chondrocytes synthesize metric enzymatic uh, digestion and other protein. And important to note that there is uh, uh, no innovation, in, innovation, no lymphatic drainage, and no lymphatic and no blood supply for this hyaline cartilage. Unit load is an important concept in understanding the function of the joint. Uh, it is basically a compressive force which is expressed as kilogram per cubic centimeter of articular cartilage 
uh, it is fairly constant over hip, knee and ankle and about 20 to 26 kilogram per cubic centimeter. Uh, joint is protected by various mechanisms. Uh, one is the adjacent muscles which act as shock absorber and protect the joint. If there is increased unit load on a joint, the joint deformed. So if this deformity results in increased contact area of the joint and this increased contact area will obviously re reduce the unit load on the joint. Then interarticular structures such as ligament and menisci also allow two plane movement and they uh, reduce the unit load on the joint. Ligaments, tendon, periarticular connective tissue and nerves all these are important protective mechanisms of the joint which decrease the unit load or which control the unit load. What happens if there is an injury to any component of the joint, it will result into dysfunction of the joint and this function of this joint will result in degeneration of other components of the joint as happens in uh, anterior cruciate ligament if torn in an athlete it will result in joint instability and this instability of the joint will result in degeneration of the articular cartilage uh, the arthropathies have been divided into four major categories uh, congenital malformation deformities and defects degenerative and traumatic joint diseases crystal induced arthritis and inflammatory joint disease the group which include uh, uh, these acute and chronic injury osteoarthritis and other degenerative diseases such as uh, neuropathic arthropathy amyloid arthropathy hypertrophic osteoarthritis osteochondritis desiccans and diabetic arthropathy while inflammatory joint disease include viral bacterial microbial microbacterial or uh, fungal joint diseases, post-infectious arthritis, rheumatic fever arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, seronegative spondylar arthropathies and other arthritis which include Beckett syndrome, sarcoid arthropathy, arthritis with primary immunodeficiency, relapsing polyarthritis and arthritis with generalized uh, immune diseases. While crystal induced arthritis include gout, pseudogout and calcium hydroxyapatite deposition disease. Osteoarthritis, which is also termed as degenerative joint disease, is a disease which is characterized by cartilage degeneration that results in a structural and functional failure of the sinoid joint. Or you can also say that it is a non-inflammatory disorder of movable joint with articular cartilage degeneration and new bone formation at the joint surface and margins. It is most common type of joint disease and mostly it is progressive. Then the classification of this osteoarthritis, the classification of the osteoarthritis you can divide it into primary and secondary type. Primary type of the osteoarthritis is due to destruction of the joint which result from uh, intrinsic defect in the articular cartilage itself and uh, it can be of generalized type and localized type. Generalized type is generalized osteoarthritis with Heberdin's nodule, erosive osteoarthritis, endemic osteoarthritis and osteoarthritis with involved type 2 procollagen defects. Then uh, localized type are uh, loca localized only to only uh, only to a single joint and there is a term that is chondromalacia patelli and this uh, Chondromalacia patelli is a term which, uh, in which the uh, osteoarthritis affects the patellar surface of the femoral condyles of the young pupil. Then this uh, secondary type of osteoarthritis can be divided into various groups. In group 1 there is uh, crystal deposited such as in hyperparathyroidism, 
uh, hyperchromatosis, chromatosis, Wilson's disease, gout, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, basic calcium phosphate disease, oxalosis. Group 2 is concerned with uh, necrosis or abnormality in the subchondral bones such as neck perthes disease, aseptic necrosis, slip capital, femoral epiphysis, post-traumatic osteoarthritis, page disease of the bone, and a stride arthropathy. Then say another group in the secondary type of this osteoarthritis, which is due to some underlying cause, is group three, that is abnormal joint laxity, such as uh, ehlers danlos syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, and Marfan syndrome. The group four include abnormal cartilage growth or function, and there are a lot of disorders such as ac acromegaly, chondroplasia. Spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia, multiple epiphyseal dysplasia, congenital hip dysplasia, polysaccharidosis, ochronosis, or diabetes mellitus. Group 5 includes cerebral destruction and cartilage of the cartilage and bone, and these are post inflammatory osteoarthritis, post infectious osteoarthritis, and hemophilic arthropathy. So the etiological factor for the osteoarthritis are increased unit load, resilience of the articular cartilage and stiffness of the subchondral coarse cancellous bone. Uh, there are many uh, reasons for this uh, increased unit load. One of the important causes is congenital hip dysplasia in which the, uh, the socket of the acetabulum is shallow. It covers only 35% of the femoral head which is normally uh, covered 50% of the femoral head is covered normally. So if this less area is covered by articular cartilage, it increases the unit load on the joint articular cartilage and hence there is chondrocyte death and articular cartilage is degraded. Uh, resilience of the articular cartilage, uh, as we know that there is a, a large quantity of water within this articular cartilage and it normally has a swelling pressure of at least 3 atmospheres disruption or disturbance of the water content lead to decreased resilience. <clears throat> then stiffness of the subchondral coarse cancellous bone as happens in Paget disease will result in increased unit load in the cartilage and result in the osteoarthritis. The morphological lesion of the articular cartilage results from degeneration or disordered repair of the articular cartilage which are due to the chondrocyte injury and this chondrocyte injury is by biochemical stress or genetic pleomorphism uh, which uh, lead to abnormal signaling mechanism or signaling transduction mechanism and uh, due to this chondrocyte injury the protoglycan synthesis is disturbed as there is continuous formation and degradation of the protoglycan uh, in that area when there, dec there is decreased synthesis and degradation is more, then the proticulacan composition is changed and uh, result in the uh, osteoarthritis. Chondrocyte injury also lead to the uh, TGF beta uh, secretion and through its secretion, the matrix metalloproteases are secreted and this TGF beta mediated matrix metalloprotease secretion there is increased degradation of type 2 collagen network there are other soluble mediators uh, liberated that are TNF prostaglandins and nitric oxide also so there is low level inflammation uh, which is which contributes to the insidious nature of this uh, disease due to alteration in the matrix so this imbalance between synthesis and degradation of the cartilage matrix is due to increased degradation by pro-inflammatory cytokines, matrix metalloproteinases such as collagenases, estromylacin, uh, gelatinases, agricanases, prostaglandins or nitric oxidases and synthesis of anti-inflammatory cytokines, tissue inhibitor of matrix metalloproteinases growth factors, collagen synthesis and proteoglycan synthesis is decreased. Now if we summarize the pathogenetic event, there are some genetic influences, also some acquired risk factors. The genetic influences are biochemical abnormalities in the collagen, proteoglycans and bone formation or uh, 
the uh, abnormality in congruity of the joint surfaces or acquired risk factors such as age, obesity, metabolic condition, malalignment or joint trauma or injury which lead to the structural damage to the cartilage and this is structural damage to the cartilage will alter the function of the chondrocyte as we have seen in previous lecture. Uh, so uh, this alteration in chondrocyte function will lead to the matrix metalloproteinases uh, release with degradation of collagen and proteoglycan. Also there is muscle weakness present uh, and both these factors can subsequently further damage uh, lead to further damage to the cartilage, articular cartilage. These factors will then release the cytokines and these cytokines will result in inflammation of the synovium or bone remodeling. This bone remodeling can, it, can we contribute further to the muscle weakness. Prevalence and severity of primary osteoarthritis increases with age. About 4% of the people between the age of uh, 18 to 24 years are affected, uh, while 85% of the people uh, between the age of 75 to 79 years are affected. The disease is more common in men before the age of 45 years and it is more common in females after the age of 55. Uh, in men, the most commonly affected joint is hip while in female the more commonly affected joint is mm -hmm. so now histogenesis of the uh, uh, this osteoarthritis in the left diagram you can see that some of the chondrocytes are dead and this that is marked by empty lacunae on the upper uh, the outer and uh, surface uh, of this uh, inner cartilage or joint surface of this uh, articular cartilage and uh, as a result, the surrounding chondrocytes, which are viable, they aggregate in large and they, are, they now become surrounded by the basophilic material, which is termed as territorial matrix. Uh, the process can be arrested at this stage for several years, but uh, as the predisposing factors are, uh, are there, so uh, it can lead to the next step which is the formation of early cracking and fibrillation. In fibrillation, there is development of surface cracks parallel to the long axis of the articular cartilage. Still, it is limited to the uh, area above the tide mark. As the fibrillation progresses, the, there is loss of the articular cartilage and this articular cartilage can, be, can go to the uh, synovium and start uh, an inflammatory reaction even in the synovium. And now this uh, defect or this crack is vertical in the long axis uh, of the fiber of the perpendicular or long axis of this uh, articular cartilage. And uh, due to this uh, defect, there is hypertrophy of the adjacent chondrocyte as we discussed earlier and now this defect is going down and uh, it has gone beyond the tight mark and whole thickness of the cartilage and this cartilage the removed cartilage can go into the joint as a loose body or and uh, the bone is also resolved due to some of the part of the bone is also start, started to resolve due to osteoclastic activity and as you know there is a simultaneous osteoblastic activity there and due to these activities uh, the underlying bone is going to be thickened. Uh, what happens next when uh, there is a vascularization of this area there is a, a, a accumulation or in, in infiltration by the mesenchymal cells and these mesenchymal cells then differentiate into uh, fibrocartilage plug. The fibrocartilage is instable mechanically so it disappears progressively and the underlying bone is exposed and this underlying bone is thickened and impermeated. If there is any crack in the bone, uh, there is leakage of synovial fluid which initiates the formation of subcontinent bone cyst formation. 
uh, focal regrowth of articular surface will result in osteophyte formation. Uh, the osteophytes, which are also termed as spur, are pearly, greyish white uh, uh, bone nodules, usually on the periphery of the joint surface and formed by differentiation of the mesenchymal tissue into the osteoblast and chondroblast. They produce characteristic leaping pattern on radiology. Uh, the osteophyte of the distal interphalangeal joints are termed as Haberden nodes. All these pathogenetic events then lead to characteristic morphology of the osteoarthritis that is fissured or crack formation, presence of loose body, hibernation of the joint surface, formation of microcyst, uh, presence of osteophyte or sinus limb changes. The Chondrocyte proliferation, decreased proteoglycan, increased water and collagen type 2 degradation result in granular and soft articular surface. Loose bodies uh, are mm, formed due to full thickness uh, sloughing off of the cartilage. Then, hibernation is due to uh, friction, this uh, joint surface, exposed joint surface is now hibernated and uh, it is shiny articular surface basically. Uh, microcysts are formed due to collection of the synovial fluid within due to formation of gap and small fractures inside. And the osteophytes we have earlier discussed, these are the mushroom shaped bony outgrowths at the margin of the uh, outer surface. And these are capped by fibrocartilage or hyaline cartilage and these uh, cartilage in addition ossify gradually. Synovium is involved in lately in the osteoarthritis and if uh, seen it is mildly congested fibrotic and it contains few uh, inflammatory cells. This is the gross appearance of the joint articular surface which is showing a permission. There is on the extreme right there is some remnant of the uh, articular cartilage and two evident subchondral cysts are present on the upper field. So these changes are evident by the radiology as this, this uh, x-ray is showing the uh, hip joint with narrow joint space subchondral sclerosis is scattered over the cysts and peripheral osteophyte leaping which is marked by this uh, arrow and uh, this is a knee joint with narrow joint spaces subchondral sclerosis and lateral uh, osteophyte. The patient of osteoarthritis is usually an old or uh, old age man or women. If the signs and symptoms are present in the younger individuals, the underlying cause for the osteoarthritis must be sought. Uh, the symptoms and symptoms can be mild or severe. Uh, the the joint is enlarged, tender, and bulky. It is painful, and there can be no be only growths present in the finger and uh, loss of cartilage in the joint will result in pain which is deep achy pain this pain versus uh, it will get worse with the moment there is morning stiffness in the joint but it relieves uh, after some time with activity and uh, there is swelling of the joint also then there are effect of effect uh, by the osteophytes in which uh, the there is nerve root compression which result in radicular pain spasm of the muscle supplied by that particular nerve atrophy of the muscle uh, or uh, neurological deficit <clears throat> then there is limitation of the uh, joint moment uh, joint deformities develop over time but uh, fusion usually doesn't occur the commonly affected joints are hip knee lower lumbar and cervical vertebrae proximal and distal interphalangeal joints of the finger first carpometacarpal joints and first metatarsal uh, joint the tarsal metatarsal joint the few joints of the body are spurred by a 
from this uh, osteoarthritis. These are wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Uh, neuropathic joint diseases or charcoal joint was uh, described by Jean Martin Charcot in mid 19th century, who described the uh, destruction of new joint in patients with Davis dorsalis and termed uh, uh, it as charcoal joint. It is basically a form of non inflammatory arthritis which is characterized by progressive joint destruction due to a primary uh, neurological disorder such as peripheral neuropathy or central motor abnormality. These days the commonest cause of this uh, uh, neuropathic joint disorder is diabetes mellitus following the peripheral neuropathy. Uh, in syringomalia, the, there is destruction of shoulder and other upper extremity joint. Uh, and uh, this uh, charcoal joint or neuropathic joint is considered a rapid and severe form of secondary osteoarthritis which is associated with joint fragmentation. Uh, what happens is there in this osteoarthritis, there is loss of innervation of the joint structure and due to this loss of innervation, the, there is lack of uh, proper reception and pain. So the joints uh, mechanic are now abnormal and as a result the, there is destruction of the joint. Microscopically there is marked destruction uh, of the articular cartilage and subcontral bone. There is uh, subcontral sclerosis cyst formation and it is characterized by large amount of cartilage and bone detritus within the hyperplastic synovium. Rheumatoid arthritis can be defined as uh, it is a chronic multi-system inflammatory disorder that produces a non-separative, glorificative and inflammatory synovitis that often progresses to destruction of the articular cartilage and ankylosis of the joint or simply uh, we can define this as a chronic autoimmune disorder that principally attacks the joint producing a non-supportive proliferative and inflammatory synovitis. The, as it is a multi-system disease, both the joints and extra, and extra articular sites are affected. The characteristic joint lesions of uh, this rheumatoid arthritis are uh, destruction of the articular cartilage and ankylosis of the joint. The extra articular lesions are present in skin, heart, blood vessel and lung. It should be uh, differentiated from other autoimmune diseases such as systemic leukocerebrosis and scleroderma. Uh, about three cases per 10,000 populations are reported worldwide, uh, hence their prevalence is about 1% of the world population. Peak age for this disease is about uh, 20 to 50 years and there is uh, more female predominance females are thrice commonly effective than that of males. As far as this pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis is concerned, this uh, autoimmunity is uh, started by CD4 helper T cells and uh, as in other autoimmune disease, the pathogenetic predisposing factors can be genetic and environmental which are responsible for the course of the disease including its development to uh, the persistence. HLA-DR4 is linked with uh, rheumatoid arthritis because uh, HLA-DR4 when killing epitope on citrullinated proteins mimic an epitope on various microbes and can be presented by class 2 HLA-DR4. Hence this HLA-DR4 allele is related with uh, anti-citrullinated protein antibody positive rheumatoid arthritis. 50% of the risk to develop uh, rheumatoid arthritis is linked with genetic uh, susceptibility. <clears throat> then the environmental factors are uh, responsible for the formation of citrullinated protein which sets off uh, antibody production. Uh, antigen antibody reaction is <clears throat> responsible for the initiation of inflammation and cytokine release which can subsequently recruit more cells and induce tissue damage. <coughs> Excuse. Uh, the helper 1 cells, they 
uh, a lineage of CD4 effector cells that uh, secrete uh, in gamma interferon and they act on macrophage and resident synovial cells. There is secretion of TNF and interleukin 1 from the macrophages and these in, in turn act on resident synovial cells. There is release of the proteases from the synovial cell in return and this in turn is going to damage the hyaline cartilage. TNF is an important uh, target for the pharmac pharmacological effects. Interleukin 17, uh, sorry, this T helper cell 17 assists B cells to make antibody activate the macrophages and recruit other immune cells to the uh, inflamed area. And this helper 17 secretes interleukin 17 which recruit more neutrophil and monocytes to that environment and as a release there is inflammation and tissue injury. Activated T cells they express rank ligand on their surface and uh, hence they start uh, osteoclastic activation and bone is resorbed. So uh, through these cytokines the morphological changes or tissue damage occurs. The synovium in the rheumatoid arthritis contains numerous uh, active germinal follicles and these uh, germinal follicles contain plasma cells. Plasma cell res is responsible for the uh, secretion of uh, immunoglobulin and these antibodies are basically uh, are against self antigen and many of these antibodies are again specific for citrullinated peptides hence these are also termed as entry citrullinated peptide antibodies uh, these citrullinated peptides are basically the peptides in which arginine residues are post translationally converted to the citrulline and many of the proteins are affected by this and some proteins are fibrinogen type 2 collagen alpha enolase and guanidine uh, entry citrullinated peptide Antibodies are diagnostic marker for rheumatoid arthritis and they are present in about 70% of the cases. Uh, then there is another uh, antibody and this is collectively termed as uh, R effector. This is basically IgM and IgA antibody uh, which bind to the IgG FC region. Okay. And uh, these antigen antibody complexes can be deposited in the, uh, can be deposited in the joint also, and uh, uh, there are many false positive and false negative cases have been recorded for this uh, R F factor. After any arthritogenic stimulus, there is a stimulation of the synovial cell to proliferate. There is increase in vascularity, resulting in uh, fibrin excitation in the joint cavity. The excessive fibrin may form small nodules and these nodules uh, float freely within the joint cavity and termed as rice bodies. The normal synovial lining is uh, 1 to 4 cell thick and is uh, in the RNA it becomes 8 to 10 layer thick. As a result it is thrown into numerous fold. There is simultaneous influx by the lymphocyte and mast cell also. The hyperplastic inflammatory synovium slowly invade uh, the articular cartilage and the area adjacent to it and, uh, uh, and covers and isolate it from the joint space. This covering is termed as penis. Uh, the, the aggregate of the lymphocytes also transform into follicles. Uh, there is juxta articular bone loss as we have seen in previous discussion on pathogenesis of this disease. The de demolition effect of the penis is not limited to the bone. With progression it involves tendon and ligaments which lead to uh, joint deformities. If the joint is destroyed there is fibrous ankylosis first which ossifies to form bony ankylosis. So the histopathological uh, features of the rheumatoid arthritis are synovial hyperplasia and proliferation, inflammatory infiltrate presence, 
uh, angiogenesis, presence of fibrin or purulent exudate, and osteoclastic activity. Penis uh, is the uh, mass which is uh, uh, basically an adimitous synovium with inflammatory cells, granulation tissue, and fibroblasts, which creep over the articular cartilage and responsible for the uh, major uh, demolition act. Then fibrous bone ankylosis, after the destruction and demolition, uh, there is union by fibrous tissue first and then the uh, ossification of this fibrous tissue. Another feature of this rheumatoid arthritis is presence of rheumatoid nodule which is present in 25% of the cases. Uh, it is frequently present on the pressure areas uh, uh, such as ulnar aspect of the forearm, elbow, occiput and lymphocephal area though it is recorded in the uh, viscera also such as lung, spleen, pericardium, myocardium, heart valves, aorta, dura and other viscera. It is uh, mic microscopically they are a small firm masses which are non-tender and round to oval while microscopically they are necrotizing granulomas with central zone of fibrinoid necrosis and this is surrounded by a prominent rim of uh, activated necrophages with lymphoplasmas that can filtrate. The morning stiffness lasts more than one hour and it has uh, no relation with the activity as osteoarthritis uh, pain is related with the activity but uh, here there is no relation with the activity. Uh, then uh, patients are often tired and don't sit properly, the, there is joint enlargement and uh, disability as the disease progresses and uh, after uh, the disease progression there are various uh, various form, form of uh, deformities which are linked with this disease such as radial deviation of the wrist, other deviation of the finger, flexion hyperextension of the finger that is termed as swan neck deformity and butternary deformity. There are many consist constitutional symptoms uh, as the immune system involves whole of the body and the symptoms are fatigue, tiredness, weight loss, anemia, muscle pain, loss, lack of energy, loss of appetite, inability to sleep, low fever and uh, lung, heart and eye problems. It is separated from other arthropathies by anti-citral limited antibodies positivity and characteristic radiological features. As it is a multi-system disorder, it frequently exhibits uh, uh, extra-articular features such as Sika features, uh, dryness of the eye, dryness of the mouth, Reynolds phenomena, carpal tunnel syndrome, rheumatoid nodules which we have seen may are present in many sites, then uh, pleural effusion and rheumatoid vasculitis. In the initial stage of the disease, a joint effusion, juxtaarticular osteopenia with erosion, narrowing of the joint space and loss of the articular cartilage are the features which are associated with this rheumatoid. Now for the diagnosis of the rheumatoid arthritis, R factor is uh, non-specific and though it is present in 80% of the cases, but it is, uh, it is uh, non-specific as uh, there are more false positive and false negative cases are uh, reported but this anti citrullin irritated peptide antibody is diagnostic of the rheumatoid arthritis. Analysis of synovial fluid is important. There is increase in volume, increased turbidity and viscosity is decreased. The protein content and the number of inflammatory cells is very much increased. Sometimes it uh, goes beyond 50 thousand per microliter but majority of these uh, inflammatory cells are comprised of neutrophil. There is a diagnostic criteria for the diagnosis of uh, rheumatoid arthritis and four out of seven of these criteria should be present to diagnose or label a patient with rheumatoid arthritis and these criteria are morning stiffness arthritis in three or more joint areas arthritis of hand joint, symmetrical arthritis, uh, rheumatoid nodule presence, serum rheumatoid factor and typical radiographic uh, changes we have uh, discussed. Uh, this illustration is showing the uh, morphological comparison between the uh, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis in the left side. In rheumatoid arthritis you can see that uh, there is synovial inflammation 
from the very start and uh, penis formation which is the characteristic lesion of this rheumatoid arthritis the cartilage is because this uh, this uh, inflamed synovium creeps over the articular cartilage the cartilage is eroded and this is not limited to the only to the cartilage the surrounding the structure tendon and uh, ligaments all are disturbed and demolished and finally there is uh, fibrous ankylosis first which finally ossifies and uh, the bony ankylosis develop while in osteoarthritis there is uh, the uh, the pathogenesis starts from the articular cartilage first and this articular cartilage uh, destruction will result in microcyst formation subchondral sclerosis then osteophyte formation but there is no ankylosis this table from robins summarizes the distinguishing feature between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis the osteo the primary pathogenic uh, abnormality in osteoarthritis is mechanical injury to articular cartilage by rheumatoid arthritis is in autoimmune process uh, there is role of inflammation is secondary in uh, osteoarthritis while rheumatoid arthritis is uh, uh, has got inflammatory role for right from the start the joints uh, involved in osteoarthritis are weight bearing joints primarily and uh, in rheumatoid arthritis the small joints of of fingers are affected first and multiple joints later on are affected pathology of the osteoarthritis is a cartilage degeneration fragmentation formation of cysts spurs and minimal inflammation while uh, in uh, rheumatoid arthritis the inflammatory process is severe and there is penis formation and destruction of the cartilage and chronic inflammation with fibrosis first and then bony uh, ankylosis serum antibodies are present in rheumatoid arthritis uh, such as rheumatoid factor and anti citrullinated citrullinated peptide antibody while there is no antibody in osteoarthritis uh, other organ involvement is frequent in or rheumatoid arthritis but, uh, but osteoarthritis is uh, not associated with, with any extra articular manifestation the juvenile idiopathic arthritis is also termed as stills disease about 30 to 50000 cases in the us uh, have been reported uh, it is a heterogeneous group of disorder of unknown etiology that presents with arthritis before the age of 16 years and persists for at least 6 weeks less than 16 years and 6 weeks so the uh, the still disease or gia is a large joint disorder of the male lead to functional disability However, rheumatoid nodule and R factor are absent. There are some differentiating features of this GIA from rheumatoid arthritis. These are that oligoarthritis is more common, systemic disease is more frequent, large joints are affected more, and ANA seropositivity or anti-nuclear antibody is common. However, it resembles with the rheumatoid arthritis in certain aspect, such as its uh, uh, association with certain HLA uh, types. Then, the inflammatory cells which are involved, such as Th1 and Th17, and inflammatory mediators interleukin 117, gamma interferon, and TNF, are involved in the pathogenic process. zero negative spondyloarthropathies are a group of disease uh, that develop in genetically predisposed host and are initiated by ubiquitous environmental factor especially infectious agents uh, the characteristic of these arthropathies 
are the absence of rheumatoid factor, hence these are termed as seronegative. The pathological changes are mainly in the ligamentous attachment rather than the synovium. Sacroiliac joint is commonly affected. There is association with HLA-B27. Bony proliferation leads to ankylosis and this, uh, these uh, arthropathies are frequently associated with extra articular manifestations which can be seen in eye, skin and central uh, and cardiovascular system. The entities which are included in the uh, seronegative spondyloarthropathies are ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis and arthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease. Ankylosing spondylitis which is one of the seronegative spondyloarthropathy and is also termed as rheumatoid spondylitis and Mary Strumpel disease is a chronic synovitis that causes destruction of the articular cartilage and it results in bony ankylosis, especially of the sacroiliac and epiphyseal joints. Uh, if uh, there is uh, inflammation of the tendon ligamentous insertion site, it results in the ossification and produces squaring and fusion of the vertebral bodies and bony outgrowth. Uh, together, these two lesions result in severe spinal immobility. The onset of disease is between 20 to 30 years of age, then it is uh, uh, about twice as common in men than in female. Uh, the patient presents as asymmetric low back pain and spinal immobility. The frequently affected joints are sacroiliac, hip, knee and shoulder joint which are affected in about one third of the cases. The pathogenesis of this disease is linked with the HLA-B27 which is present in more than 90% of the cases. The uh, HLA-B27 role is not clear though it is linked with the antigen processing and presentation to trigger the disease. Recently, uh, ARTS-1 gene that encodes a peptide that trims the antigen being process, uh, processed for the presentation by class 1 HLA molecule is linked with this disease. Also, interleukin-23 receptor gene are also associated with this uh, uh, disease as it is uh, thought that this uh, interleukin-23 promotes T helper 17 responses. And the complication of this disease are fracture of the spine, uveitis, aortitis and amyloidosis. Ankylosing spondylitis symmetrically affects sacroiliac joints and then involves small joints of the posterior element of the spine. Due to resultant destruction, a spine fuses posteriorly, then vertebral bodies become square. As shown in this cross picture of uh, the vertebral column, which is cut uh, uh, vertically to show the square shaped vertebral bodies and fusion of the bone bridges. Uh, later on, the intervertebral disc ossifies and uh, intervertebral disc then disappear or can be replaced by the bone marrow. Uh, there is uh, osteoporosis of the vertebral bodies also due to disuse atrophy. Uh, amelodo uh, this uh, ankylosing spondylitis is a crippling disease, but uh, there is no effect on the life span. Now if we summarize the pathogenetic event, there are some genetic influences, also some acquired risk factors. The genetic influences are biochemical abnormalities in the collagen, proteocollagens and bone formation or uh, uh, the uh, abnormality in congruity of the joint surfaces or acquired risk factors such as age, obesity, metabolic condition, malalignment or joint trauma or injury which lead to the structural damage to the cartilage 
and this is structural damage to the cartridge will alter the function of the chondrocyte as we have seen in previous lecture. Uh, so uh, this alteration in chondrocyte function will lead to the matrix metalloproteinases uh, release with degradation of collagen and proteoglycan. Also there is muscle weakness present uh, and both these factors can subsequently further damage uh, lead to further damage to the cartilage, articular cartilage. These factors will then release the cytokines and these cytokines will result in inflammation of the synovium or bone remodeling. This bone remodeling can it can we contribute further to the muscle weakness. The morning stiffness lasts more than one hour and it has uh, no relation with the activity as osteoarthritis uh, pain is related with the activity but uh, here there is no relation with the activity. Uh, then uh, patients are often tired and don't sit properly that there is joint enlargement and uh, disability as the disease progresses and uh, after uh, the disease progression there are various uh, various form of uh, deformities which are linked with this disease such as radial deviation of the wrist, other deviation of the finger, flexion hyperextension of the finger that is termed as sawn neck deformity and botanical deformity. There are many consist constitutional symptoms uh, as the immune system involve whole of the body and the symptoms are fatigue, tiredness, weight loss, anemia, muscle pain, loss, lack of energy, loss of appetite, inability to sleep, low fever and uh, lung, heart and eye problems. It is separated from other arthropathies by anticitrullinated antibodies positivity and characteristic radiological features. The psoriatic arthropathy or psoriatic arthritis is present in about 7% of the people with psoriasis. Disease is uh, mostly asymptomatic but can be painful and uh, uh, initially the interpharyngeal joints of hand and feet are affected and later on uh, they further more joints are added of ankle, knee, hips, spine and wrist. Microscopic features are almost same as that of rheumatoid arthritis. The crystal induced arthritis is a term which is a group of disease and it is characterized by the uh, deposition of crystals within the uh, within the joint and these crystals are responsible for the destruction of the cartilage by inflammation. Uh, the crystals can be endogenous or exogenous. The endogenous crystals are monosodium urate crystal which results in gout then calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystal deposition that is termed as pseudo gout and basic calcium phosphate deposition. Uh, the Exogenous material uh, 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 are also responsible for the deposition of the crystals within the joint and these exogenous materials can be corticoestroid ester crystals, uh, talcum powder or uh, biomaterial silicon, polyethylene and methyl methacrylate and calcium oxalate. The term gout earlier named as podagra and then named as gout in, in 1200 AD. Uh, this term is derived from the gutta which means a drop. This term was uh, based on humorism theory which was defined by ancient Greeks and then this term was further refined by Hippocrates and Galen. Uh, the humorous, uh, humorism theory states that uh, the body is regulated in eucrasia state by four fluids and these fluids are blood, phlegm, yellow bile and black bile. Any irregularity in these fluids will result in dyscrasia or disease. The term gout was first uh, coined by the Rodolphus of uh, Bocking in 1200 AD who proposed that it is due to dropping of a morbid material from the blood into and around the joint. The disease definition currently is a disease characterized by hyperuricemia and deposition of monosodium urate crystals in the body. The gouty arthritis however is the 
transient attack of acute arthritis which is initiated by deposition of monosodium urate crystals within and around the joint. Then there is another term uh, we will study in this disease that is tophi and these are large aggregates of urate crystals and the surrounding inflammatory reaction. It is termed as tophi. Uh, when we classify this disease, this classification of the disease can be into two categories. One is the primary gout and another is secondary gout. And it is based on the two pathogenetic mechanism. As we know, the, uh, the uric acid metabolism is, is uh, if it is disturbed, it is going to produce the gout. But Two, two important steps in the uh, this uh, metabolism one is the production of the uric acid another is the excretion of the uric acid so uh, in primary one in which there is no underlying uh, etiology or a uh, known enzyme effect uh, if there is increased production uh, sorry, there is increased production or normal production but the excretion is decreased or normal and it is due to unknown enzyme defect and it is present in 85 to 90 percent of the cases of gout uh, it is primary one then known hg prt deficiency uh, will be due to increased uric acid production and excretion is normal then secondary gout, uh, gout which is responsible for only 10 percent of the cases is uh, will result in certain conditions such as increased uh, nucleic acid turnover such as in leukemia in which there is increased uric acid production and excretion is also increased in chronic renal disease the production is normal but the excretion is decreased and in congenital such as leach nehan syndrome and hjprt deficiency the production is more and excretion is also more uh, then this uh, hyperuricemia is uh, linked with the gout. Not all the cases of hyperuricemia are going to produce this gout. Uh, if the serum uric acid concentration is less than 7 mg per deciliter, only about 0.1% uh, of the cases will produce gout. When uh, if the say that serum uric acid concentration is 7 to 8.9 uh, it re rises to five times and when it rises uh, if the serum uric acid uh, concentration goes more than 9 milligram per deciliter the annual incidence of the gout rises to 10 times uh, the serum uric acid concentration above 6.8 mg per deciliter is uh, termed as hyperuricemia and uh, it is one of the contributing factor for the development of gout uh, but it is not the only factor for the development of the gout many other factors are also, also responsible as this hyperuricemia uh, is responsible for gout in only 10% of the cases uh, so there should be some contributing factors also uh, this hyperuricemia is the result of overproduction of the uric acid or reduced excretion of the uric acid uh, there is another uh, condition that is asymptomatic hyperuricemia that is described in male during puberty and female after menopause uh, the uric acid is the end product of the purine metabolism. These purines are formed through two mechanisms. One is de novo pathway and another is salvage pathway. In the de novo pathway, the purine nucleotides are synthesized from non-purine precursors. While in salvage pathway, the nucleotides are synthesized from free purine bases in the diet or those generated by purine nucleotide catabolism. Uh, then this uric acid is filtered through glomerulus and uh, in the proximal tubule it is completely almost completely dissolved and uh, in the distal nephron uh, a little quality, uh, quantity of this uric acid is excreted. 
the primary gout is responsible for the uh, the causes of the primary gout are genetic polymorphism in certain genes such as urate 1 gene glut 9 gene and uh, uh, KC and Q1 gene these genes are responsible for the transport of the uric acid in the tubules or it can be due to partial uh, partial hypoxanthine gonine phosphoribosyl transferase enzyme deficiency this partial HGPRT deficiency blocks the salvage pathway and uh, due to this block of the salvage pathway there is more production of the uric acid as the the formation of the purine is decreased so more of these uh, purine they go uh, or push towards the end product formation that is the uric acid formation then the secondary uh, gout is uh, uh, is the, the gout which is present with underlying etiology one is the uh, leukemia chemotherapy in leukemia chemotherapy there is rapid cell lysis and and hence there is increased uric acid load then uh, there is reduced excretion in the chronic renal disease so it will lead to increased uric acid concentration in the serum uh, the complete uh, hypoxanthine gonine phosphoribosyl transferase deficiency manifests more as neurological symptoms and signs hence it is termed as uh, uh, labeled as secondary gout uh, for the pathogenesis of this uh, gout uh, there is hyperuricemia uh, in 10% of the cases this hyperuricemia is responsible for the development of disease the main event is the is the in the development of this gout is the precipitation of urate crystals in the joint this pre precipitation of the urate crystal in the joint is regulated by local temperature and intraarticular concentration of the urate a decrease in the temperature is associated with decreased solubility so this decreased solubility favors uh, precipitation the precipitation is also facilitated by the presence of a nucleating agent such as insoluble collagen fiber chondroitin sulfate protoglycan cartilage fragment or any other crystals so uh, there is super saturation of the cyanobyl fluid by this mono sodium urate in the joint space especially the distal joints of the feet uh, where the temperature is less the temperature is recorded in these areas such as uh, the toe joint it is about uh, uh, recorded as 20 degrees centigrade uh, in this scenario where these are concentrated these crystals are concentrated and these are present in the synovium when there is uh, any undefined uh, uh, stimulus or when there is trauma these are uh, released into the joint cavity by any uh, this undefined stimulus and when they in are induced into the joint cavity they initiate an inflammatory response when there is precipitation uh, so this inflammatory response is shown in this diagram where these monosodium urate crystals are first phagocyte phagocytosed by the macrophages local macrophages which release leukotriene pro prostaglandin free radicals uh, and there is simultaneous uh, activation of the complement which recruit neutrophils and um, through chemotaxis also and these cytokines can directly induce the tissue damage they can induce the damage through neutrophil or they can induce uh, the damage through release of the interleukin from the macrophage which release further chemokines and cytokines which result in cartilage uh, and cyanobyl destruction by the release of proteases so leukotriene b4 uh, 
prostaglandin and free radicals they uh, act on the neutrophil and uh, as uh, there is chemotaxis also uh, the monosodium urate crystals are phagocytosed by the uh, neutrophil and they are frequently ruptured due to uh, needle shaped crystals and there is lysis of the uh, neutrophil as a result there is release of lysosomal enzyme which are further responsible for the tissue injury also there is activation all all this happened due to acti uh, activation of the comple complement by the indirect pathway acute arthritis remain uh, uh, remits spontaneously in weeks to uh, days and if there is repeated effect of this acute arthritis there is actually formation of tophi which are aggregate of monosodium urate crystals and the inflammatory tissue which is present in inflamed synovium and periarticular tissue ultimately there is a severe cartilage dam damage and disability of the joint due to all this pathogenetic mechanism the other factors which are responsible for the development of gout are age at which the uh, age which the patient is present or presented or the duration of the hyperlysemia uh, as gout occurs about decades after the hyperlysemia male gender is another predisposing factor genetic abnormalities we have discussed already alcohol cons consumption obesity and drug that re reduce uric acid excretion are also responsible for this disease by the end of this lecture you will uh, be able to interpret following clinical scenarios by the end of this lecture you will uh, be able to interpret following clinical scenarios by the end of this lecture you will uh, be able to interpret following clinical scenarios by the end of this video you would be able to answer this clinical uh, problem in which a 45 years old obese uh, man present to the emergency department with the swollen tender big toe on his uh, right foot he denies any trauma to the toe further questioning revealed that he had consumed a large amount of alcohol the night before patient of osteoarthritis is usually an old or uh, old age man or women if the signs and symptoms are present in the younger individuals the underlying cause for the osteoarthritis must be sought